Oil is the foundation of and that is present throughout the edifice of human civilization. There are 10 calories of hydrocarbon energy, oil and natural gas, and every calorie of food you and I eat in the industrialized world. Fertilizers are made from natural gas. Pesticides are made from oil. You drive oil-powered machines to plant, plow, irrigate, harvest, transport, package. You wrap the food in plastic, that's oil. All plastic is oil. There are seven gallons of oil in every tire. Oil is everywhere. It's ubiquitous. And it's only because of oil that there are seven billion people, or almost seven billion people on this planet right now. The arrival of this cheap, easy energy which is equivalent, by the way, to billions of slaves working around the clock, uh, changed the world in such a radical way over the last century. And the population has gone up 10 times. But by 2050, oil supply is able to support less than half the present world's population in their present way of life. So the scale of adjustment to live differently is just Enormous. The world is now using six barrels of oil for every barrel it finds. Five years ago it was using four barrels of oil for every barrel it finds. A year from now it's going to be using eight barrels of oil for every barrel it finds. What's disturbing to me is the lack of any real effort from governments worldwide or industry leaders worldwide to do something different. I mean, we have these sort of attempts to build more wind power and to, to maybe do something with tide. We've got attempts to make our cars a little bit more um, efficient. But there's nothing which really looks like a revolution coming along. These are, these are all pretty minor. And that, I think, is pretty frightening. And the governments who are driven by these economists who don't really appreciate what we're talking about are trying to stimulate consumerism to restore past prosperity in the hope that they can restore the past. They're printing yet more money lacking any collateral at all. So if, if the economy improves and recovers and growth, the famous growth comes back, it'll only be short-lived because within a short period of time, counted in months rather than years, it'll hit the supply barrier again. There'll be another price shock and a deeper recession. So I think we go into a series of vicious circles. So you have the economic growth going up, price spike, everything shuts down, that's where we are now. Then it starts to come up again. But what we have now is this is this area where there's there's no more ability to produce cheap energy. We're at the peak. We're on the downslope of oil production. No way you're going to get any more out of the ground uh, any faster. Uh, which means that things shut down, the price of oil drops, which it did in the early 2009, but then as you have an ersatz so-called recovery, the price of oil starts to come back. It's recently been hovering around $80 a barrel and, and what we see is at eighty dollars a barrel now with the economic and financial collapse people are having a hard time affording that. World oil production uh, right now is about 86 million barrels a day. Over 10 years you're looking at roughly 40, 40 million barrels a day having to be replaced. There's nothing around which can come even within a one percent of meeting that sort of demand. If we don't do something pretty quickly there's going to be a huge energy deficiency. I think the big mistake is in not recognizing um, a decade or so ago that an effort, a concerted effort, needed to be made to develop these sustainable forms of energy. I think that's something our grandchildren will look back on with uh, total uh, disbelief. You people knew that you were dealing with a finite commodity. How could you possibly uh, have built your economy around something which was going to disappear.